So a few weeks ago, my wife and I went camping in Grand Teton National Park, and this is what it looked like. So we had this trip planned months in advance and somehow we managed to get a reservation for a campsite at Jenny Lake. And as we got closer and closer to this trip coming up, we started to second guess if we actually wanted to go. The weather here in Colorado and the weather in the surrounding states has been unusually rainy and wet in the past few months. And so the weekend that we were supposed to go camping, the weather forecast looked like it was just going to be rain all weekend long. But despite that, we decided to go anyway, and boy, were we rewarded with some of the most interesting and dramatic looking sights and clouds that I couldn't have even imagined before going. I remember when I was a teenager, I think this was maybe freshman year or sophomore year of high school, my parents and I took a family trip to Yellowstone and we actually drove up there with another family and had like a whole three car convoy. It was absolutely a massive trip. And this was when I was really starting to enjoy photography. I didn't have a proper camera. I didn't have any like crazy equipment and I wasn't very good at taking the photos yet but I knew it was something that I wanted to do and something that I wanted to learn. I had the little point and shoot that my family had at the time and I carried that with me the entire trip throughout a week at Yellowstone. And while I've lost all of those photos, I remember the feeling that I had spending a week in a place where everywhere that you turn, there is some incredible photo opportunity. At the time, I couldn't really capture what I wanted to capture. I couldn't really make it look like the way that I saw it in my head but just knowing that you were surrounded with all of these beautiful sights, all of these photographable moments and scenes was something almost a little life-changing for me. But the moment that I remember the most from that trip was actually on the drive back. On the way back, we decided to drive through Grand Teton. And I remember looking out the car window as we were driving through this windy road that I hadn't realized was part of a national park yet and coming around a bend, and all of a sudden, out from behind the trees was Jackson Lake with the Grand Tetons behind it. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my God, this is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I remember begging for us to stop and for me to be able to snap a photo, but we were on a time crunch and we had a lot of people with us, so we couldn't stop and we had to just keep on going. I tried to get as much as I could out of a moving car window, but as you can imagine, none of those photos turned out well, and with my skill set back then, none of those photos would have turned out well, even if I got a chance to pull over. But in the years since, I have never forgotten that moment. I have always wanted to go back to Grand Teton National Park, to go see what I saw that day that stuck in my memory for all of these years and finally we got the chance not only to go back but to stay in the park itself.
Of course, I packed a bunch of camera equipment and I grabbed plenty of photos with my digital cameras, but amongst all of my camera equipment, I brought my Nikon EM film camera, a camera that I've probably shot a good eight to 10 rolls on over the years and have never developed a single photo. And on this trip, I found myself reaching for the film camera much more than I was reaching for the digital camera. And for a while, I couldn't really explain why. Every time we would pull over somewhere or we would stop somewhere to snap a photo, I would reach for the film camera before I would reach for anything else. Not just because it was close by, but because I wanted to. But for this entire trip, this opportunity that I've been waiting years for, I decided to shoot on film more than anything. And I think I finally understand why. See, when you're shooting on a film camera, there is a moment before you click the shutter button that you have to pause. You're looking through the viewfinder and everything else around you is blocked out. There is just you and the image in front of you. But in the back of your mind, you know there is a cost to this photo. Not only the cost of the film, not only the cost of developing it, the time it's gonna to take to develop it, but the fact that as soon as you click that shutter button, that photo and that moment is locked in forever. There is no changing it. There's no going back. And for me, those moments where nothing else matters and the only thing you have is what you're focused on in front of you, those moments are the ones that are locked away in these canisters of film for me. Those moments for me are perfect. They're as I remember them. They're as I will always remember them. I hope this is something that every photographer gets to experience at some point in their lives. But as I'm sitting here recording this video, my film rolls from this trip, as well as all of my old ones, are currently in the mail, waiting to get processed. So all of these moments and memories that I've been holding on to as perfect for all of these years, I'm going to see what they actually look like, what the photos actually came out to be. But in the meantime, I am always going to remember this trip as one of the coolest experiences I've ever had.